Cerephilians. First created with a purpose to protect the universe against Targnil's evil games. Being creations of Tig, one having a passion for the feminine form, Cerephilians have become more of a seducer than a protector. But even attractive wardens have their abilities. Cerephilians are the first lytic life form. Unlike organic, where its chemical compound is based off IQ bonds instead of carbon bonds. Therefore, their inner composition is much more different. As for their organs, there are some that are similar to those inside carbon-based life forms, like the lungs. But their heart, brain and stomach is different. And then we have their two individual organs, the Litvaria and Spatia. Their heart is stronger and more spacious than a normal heart. And their brain is bigger and houses the most of their spiritual energy. The Cerephilian stomach is a big versatile chamber with many different roles. Its first role is obviously for storing and digesting food, yet in considerably larger amounts. Its second role is to act like a combustion chamber for various purposes propelling themselves with a boost from their rear, firing an infernus beam from their mouth, or quietly executing prisoners by incinerating them. But for the last and most important role is to be used as a womb to breed up their own. But to be able to multiply themselves by having a such womb, they have the Litvaria. As for the Litvaria, it's an organ including a tentacle and a gland containing a fluid that's similar to semen, but a Cerithelian sperm cell is much larger and versatile. If it gets in contact with the insides of a Cerithelian stomach, an embryo will start to form. If it comes in contact with soil, a plant will sprout, and the resulting plant, ranging between fruit-bearing to beautiful trees, depends on the composition of the soil. The same with the Cerithelian that will bear the child. And then we lastly have the Spatia, an organ important for the Cerithelian's immune and digestive system by producing various compounds, thereby making them very resistant to diseases and poisons. Now we are continuing to the next step, all the Cerithelian subtypes. There are three different subtypes, planetary, cosmic and maternal Cerithelians. The planetary ones are the most typical and abundant of the Cerithelians, having all the basic abilities, but for planetary they are ivy and feathery, which makes them resistant to extreme temperatures and have an ability to fly with their bewinged arms. The cosmic ones are most suited for battle of all the three, having all the basics, but for their type, their bodies are completely naked to achieve highest mobility and protection when soaring in space. And for their hands, only their thumb and index finger are left, while the other three have fused together into a fin that secretes a membrane of archive that stretches out as a wing that reacts well to the dark matter in space, providing propulsion. Another ability for surviving in space, they have openings in the head over their ears that absorbs any matter, including dark matter, and converts it into energy, since their lungs have been replaced by an extension of the spatia, which converts the energy into useful compounds to supply the Cerithelian with enough nutrients to stay up under the whole flight. And then we have the maternal ones. Breeding mothers that peacefully takes care of their children, having all the basic organs, but the body of a maternal Cerithelian is much more massive than a regular Cerithelian, suited to give all the comfort a mother can give their children, even so comforting that they are being constantly visited by other Cerithelians in all ages. Now we are done with all the talking. Yet there's more to take up around these magnificent angels. 
Further questions can be posted in the Ask Sirsa video. See you next time.